Well, I guess you guys out there for Strat Baseball Newsletter know who we're talking to. We're talking to Hal and Adam. Hi, guys. Hello. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, talk with you today, so I'll be brief. Um, we'd like to know, what are your plans for the future with the game company? What's coming down the line? We have, we have something really big coming down the line, which we'll be able to talk about soon. We just can't talk about it right now, unfortunately. But it's, uh, it has to do with the online game. Yes. Oh well, we see that we have the, the new logo, which is really sharp and really snazzy. And um, one question that one of our readers wanted to know was, um, are there any plans to add or to change any of the baseball cards? The, um, maybe the, um, the patterns or anything? Are there any plans? No, they're not. The uh, board game cards have, uh, have basically been the same for many years and will probably continue the same way. Uh, because it's, we've, we've been, all the changes we have made, particularly the Super Vance version, we, you, 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 with, a, uh, with a board game you have a certain ceiling, you can't go past. And we feel we're at that ceiling now, and that the complexities of the game are, are acceptable. If we go further, it will increase the play value of the game. So the game will probably stay as it is now. The basic game has always stayed the way it has since 19... Almost like the well, first year was a bit different, but after that, be, it's pretty much the same game as it is. We, we know that the game is also a great tool for the kids for education and introducing, as we discussed before, probability. Um, I know some teachers who use it as a tool for instruction. Do you see any further um, stratomatic working with the educational community? Yeah, and actually, you should talk to. We should get Adam Rosen over here. Adam Rosen, because he's doing. Hey, Rosen. Can you, they, we're talking about like stratomatic in schools. Do you want to come and talk about this? Sure. Okay. So Adam Rosen is, is, is in charge of the, the school program. Here, come sit down, Adam. Adam Rosen. Thank you, Adam. Adam Rosen. Hey, in the hey, okay, Adam Rosen. Adam Rosen, everyone. <laughs> um, we were just mentioning that um, education and stratomatic with education, there's a couple of things that are starting to happen now. Um, can you tell us a little bit? Sure. Um, yeah, well, we have a, uh, a strategic after school program which we implemented a couple of years ago. And basically, it allows uh, schools, after school clubs to uh, purchase Stratomatic games at discounted prices in order to use them for educational purposes. So, um, you know, we have a, a wide variety of products that people use for this. And I guess that's part of the great thing about Stratomatic is we have elementary schools who, who use the game and we have high school, or actually colleges who use the game. And that's part of the reason why we came out with the Express game because you can kind of target kids at a much younger age to just ease their way into Stratomatic. So we, we offer the Express game to kind of that younger demographic and then we have the, the larger game, the baseball selector set, um, where you can get five, eight, five teams of shows for you know, middle school, college, and uh, middle school, high school, and then even some college as well. One of the things that um, we heard online today that was volunteered to us was that Stratomatic helped this person learn their math because they would have been unmotivated otherwise. Well, they don't realize they're learning their math when they're playing Stratomatic. They're playing a game and uh, they're concerned with the, they love baseball and they're learning math and they don't realize it but at the same time they're learning math and they're becoming comfortable. With, with math, and that's a big thing. Being comfortable with numbers is what Stratomatic gives you, and it also makes them aware of relationships of numbers. Uh, we were talking about the, uh, for instance, when they want to steal a base, and you can see the chances of one player have, might have a one to fifteen chance out of twenty, another player might have a one to nine chance out of twenty, and they they, they sense the difference, and it begins there. The, the difference in, in the numbers. What numbers reflect. The number of values puts it in context for a lot of the kids. That's right. right. That was one of the biggest things is the connection with the children of understanding the values. And then seeing the dice rolls and the probabilities, Stratomatic makes a very, very nice connection between the values of the probabilities and the numbers and the dice rolls. So I do know some teachers, including myself, who have used it as well. So personally, I'm glad to hear about that. Um, one thing I want to ask you, Hal, is um, as you were developing the game, 
younger. Um, were you um, a math student in school? Did you see yourself as a math student or more as a sports fan? I was pretty good at math, but I wasn't. A ma I was never a mathematician. I was just good with numbers. I mean, I, my sixth grade, I was the fastest one in adding up all the tables, or most, all the multiplication to move them quicker than anyone else. Except my handwriting was so bad they could barely read what I wrote. But uh, I was very quick with math, and I enjoyed math, and I also enjoyed baseball. And baseball, for, ma for mathematicians now, not myself, not a mathematician. But for mathematicians, it's the best hobby of all. They gravitate to baseball mathematicians. And I had a friend many years ago who was a mathematician. And he spent two years on an outrageous problem in baseball, which I'll give you to tell you what it is, you won't believe it. He wanted to prove whether a batter who was up 600 times and got 200 hits for a 333 batting average, he was more accurate doing it that way than 200 sets of three with one hit in each set. And which set was which was more accurate than in, in uh, getting the final 333 batting average. And uh, he did that for two years. And then he published his paper on the internet. And if you go, you'll see a lot of the mathematicians are involved with baseball because baseball, uh, the variables are very independent. I know a lot of savior you know, members. Like basketball and football, you have a lot of a dependency on other factors on the team. But in baseball, most of it's independent. Not all of it, but most of it's independent. It lends itself more to the statistical That's analysis. Right. The mathematicians do a lot of it. So there are many, math, there are many books on baseball by mathematicians. More so than the football. If you look at Sabre, you see how many mathematicians are involved in the formula was telling who the 10, 100 best players would ever were, you know, things like that. They come up with all these formulas, they love it. Do you feel that the game and your work has had an influence on some of the Sabre members and some of the people who are doing the analysis? Well, definitely. You know, I, I, you know we have a, of course, I, I feel our greatest uh, contribution is that Sports writers, sports announcers, so many of them have a background in strategy. You know, and, and statisticians. Uh, John Garcia was a, was a mathematics major at Connecticut College, Connecticut University. And his wife to be met her there in a math class. So uh, math is, it was part of it. But at the same token, I, I love, I just love baseball and statistics, and the history, the history of baseball. It's, it's not parallel by any other good form. Well now, let me, um, with the history perhaps changing a little bit because we're going into a different era. We had a little problem with the steroid era and there's an adjustment in the statistics. How is Stratomag going to deal with that? Does it stay the same? Do we see any patterns? Is there going to be... Well, we're, we're dealing with it as badly as the, as the major leagues are. Because we're not handling it too. Oh, did you get John Garcia in here? Yeah. Hey, John Garcia, they, they need you here. Yeah. 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 When Barry Bonds did his 73 home in 1998, we had on top of this building. We yeah. were here for the yeah. car. Two, when, when, he, when he came out that he had used steroids, he burnt that car. <laughs> That's how I believe it. We were. He, he was so upset with what he did. He was, an all, he, was a, he was a Hall of Famer without that. It's a breaking record. Who was? Getting back. Cookie? Have a cookie. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Oh Here they are, baby. This is it. This, this, Life this, doesn't this, get better than this. It's the official Stratomatic cookie. <laughs> this is amazing uh, cookie. You're going to open up the, the cafe in front of these cookies. Is that a Long Island brand? No, it's Baltimore. 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 Baltimore, Washington. Here we go. Here it is. You got that chucked in, too? It'll be a oh, it's very fortunate to have featuring birds. He's selling over here. He's a little more. He brought them in. Yeah, we have. You know, we sell them. You know, we sell them. Yeah, it's so, huge disappointment with the uh, with, with the automatic and and maybe the changes statistically in the numbers and the fluctuations. Now that there's less offense in the game. Um, what I was saying before is um, now in the steroid era, how what impact has it had on automatic thinking towards cards and production and, and, and the numbers? Obviously disappointing. Is there an impact? Wow. 
Okay, you know, we have 1937, which is the National League. Um, this is perhaps the greatest offensive set of all time. The average hitter was 303 in the National League. And they, I didn't want to run that right away because the ball they use in the National League um, was, was, was not the same type of baseball used in the American League. And the average was much higher. And I was a little upset by that because I really believed that the, the equipment should not be a factor. The drug should not be a factor. We ran in 1936. It was a big sell. People love the averages. Uh, for instance, 1968, which is the reverse of that, which I think the average here was 236, about 236. So did you adjust? No, that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That, that's, that's they play among themselves, it's 236. Uh, so like to use those years against other years. No, I mean, Gibson, Kip Gibson, and he would not hit him. Now, when he goes up against other eras, it'll pick up a bit on the average, but he'll still find them very good right. to hit. That's the way it should be. So like I guess in 30 years, I have parks like Baker Bowl. Oh, yeah. You know, so Baker Bowl is some Baker crazy ball. ballpark differences between that and the Yankees. The Baker Bowl was the Bam I think it was like 244 feet or something. Sure. It was very short. And in fact, the right fielder, who was the right fielder? It's a check swing. Who was the right fielder? He had like 44 assists or something. He didn't have a great arm. But he had with the Baker Bowles. Everything was like, he was on top of second base for every throw. Who was his name? Well, Chuck Klein? Chuck Klein, that's it. Very good, good. Chuck Klein. But he had a, he, that was his MVP, like an MVP year for him, right? He had a, a bevy of assists. Which makes it all more interesting for playing year to year and making your own determinations and your own making. Um, I had asked how if there were any maybe changes coming up to the cards and the form, is there any adjustments that have been made as the years kind of change a little bit and we go into a less offensive year? Well, the cards still... Sure. Cards like still... Uh, yeah. The yeah. formula is the same. It change regardless of the averages that. We are able to... It's interesting. Even though... There are a lot of differences that before 1920. Uh, the uh, Dead Bull era was a lot different. Once you hit 1920, <laughs> I saw that. Once you hit 1920, uh, they're pretty, I mean, uh, obviously, many more home runs out of there. They had a lot of triples. The triple was a home run at that time. Yeah. You know, so, um, and there were less strikeouts, more walks, the batting average was higher. So there were, there were things that compensated for So, when comparing Dead Ball era to the modern era, we're looking at a totally different game for how they match it up. This year you released some new card sets. Um, was it a challenge to work on those sets um, that came up with this year? I worked on them. Yeah. John? Um, no, it's fun to work on the old sets. Um, they still, I mean, create the cards the same way. 2014, 1969. I used to work on the old sets. I used to be able to read it. And that was, I loved it. You know, this was 1911. I just enjoyed going through the story of this page every, every week and reading about the players of that era. Seriously, when you first started working on your sets, did you sit there, paper and pen, tally marking, stat by stat? Did you, you know, the stats weren't available as they are today. They weren't. And you know, you, as one individual, as an individual like myself, I had to I didn't have any um, old get to do so. It was very difficult. It was like a Bill James had started. A lot of the stuff was supposition to his And eventually he was able to get the uh, stats and the frame of his thoughts. Uh, I you know, I had the same problem. The same problem. The things that, what's very interesting, I find, um, in the early games, but the Stratomatic cards had a very much, 
an impact on uh, uh, baseball itself. Uh, people uh, play uh, and understand uh, that. Because people who play soccer uh, knew that the batting average is not the most important. Uh, they knew it because they would see these cards, they would see tennis cards, they would see all these walks. It's the first they had a lot of time. A lot, of, a, a, a lot of baseball people turned on to the idea of on base percentage. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I really feel it. I feel it. The, uh, the Oakland A's manager, B. He played Stratomatic as a youngster. Did he? Yeah, I think subconsciously he picked up on it. On base average, he was trying to talk. Has he said it? Has he said it? No. I can't okay. prove it. But he was always a big man on base average. And it's right there. You look at the tennis cards. He shot. Yes. That was a fact. Anyone playing Stratomatic. Well, again, if you don't connect with it on a mathematical, cerebral level, where yeah. you're seeing the probabilities, there's a visual level, a visual level. When, you, when you connect with the card. Right. So you're kind of going across the modalities, and you're going across the board with different learners, different types of people, which is the broad appeal of the game. Kind of connect myself, kind of connected me into it. I wasn't a math student until I was able to pick up the cards. Once, I guess, the initial impact was the visual of seeing, then the base of knowledge evolves. This is what we're hoping with the uh, cards again. I saw today a lot more dice rollers here. This is dice rollers day, not computer day, but how you had said before that if there were computer people here today, the lines would have... As quickly as they do, they would come today to get their computer discs. I wanted to ask another question. I, I, it might be a little trivial, silly. Is there any chance of ever seeing another negative six arm? <laughs> Is there any chance of ever seeing another negative six arm in the outfield ever again? <laughs> I don't know. Any chance? Well, 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 well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much. Okay, nice to see you. Well, well, thank you so much. Yeah. Have a cookie. I love to. <laughs> Hi, my name is John from Stratomatic. Please subscribe to Ultimate Stratomatic Baseball Newsletter and read strat Strategists Online. Strategists.com.